Relative clauses. Hmm. It's one of those areas for learners and teachers that's a bit of a challenge. The meaning isn't so hard, it's basically just adding some extra information about a noun, but the form can be very tricky. And I've often seen in ELT materials something like this. Use who for people, which for things, and where for places. Okay, so the woman who is interesting, the house which is tiny, Birmingham where is beautiful. Ah, why doesn't that work? I'm Joga Conga from ELT Training and this is another video for my Grammar Quirk series. Let's have a quick review of the rules of defining relative clauses in case you're feeling confused. So, a defining relative clause looks something like this. She's the woman who likes cats. This is one sentence with two clauses. She's the woman and the woman likes cats. It's a defining relative clause because the first clause, she's the woman, doesn't make sense without that extra information. She's the woman? Which woman? The woman who likes cats. Ah, that woman. You can see that the who takes the place of the noun in the second clause, so it's called a relative pronoun. So far, so good. Let's move on a bit. If we're talking about a thing, we use which. The shop which sells the best fruit is the one on the high street. The shop is on the high street. The shop sells the best fruit. Then we have the that rule. In these kind of sentences where the information is essential, we can substitute that for who or which. It's obviously a bit more informal and a lot more common in speech. She's the woman that likes cats. The shop that sells the best fruit is the one on the high street. And just to make things a bit more complicated still, relative pronouns can take the place of an object in a clause too. This is the house that Jack built. This is the house. Jack built the house. This is the house that Jack built. In this case, you can see that the relative pronoun replaces the object, house, not the subject, Jack. If this is the case, we can just miss out the relative pronoun altogether. This is the house Jack built. So there are different options. This is the house which Jack built. This is the house that Jack built. Or just, this is the house Jack built. This is the woman who Jack loves. That Jack loves. Or just, this is the woman Jack loves. But this is the woman who loves cats. This is the woman that loves cats. We can't miss the pronoun out here. We can't say this is the woman loves cats. We can't miss the pronoun out here because it's the subject of that clause. So what about the original question? Why can't I say Birmingham where is beautiful? We can use where and when in these clauses, but the issue is that they're relative adverbs, so they can't be the subject of the second clause. Birmingham is the place where I grew up? Yes. Birmingham is the place. I grew up in Birmingham. Birmingham is the place where is beautiful? No. Which is beautiful? because where can't be the subject. Phew, <laughs> I told you it was all a bit complicated. The rules are slightly different for non-defining relative clauses where the information isn't essential, but let's leave those on one side for now. If you want a great little activity that requires not much preparation and practices these defining relative clauses, here's one for you. It's one I've used many times over the years, but the original idea came from Penny Ear's Grammar Practice book, which if you don't know, is still a fantastic resource after 30 years since it was first published. 
you just need two lists of nouns. Make it a mixture of places, objects, people, times. It works best if these are quite specific, but make sure that the words are within the vocabulary range of your learners. Here's an example for you. You'll need two lists like this. Give one to half of the class and one to the other half. Then give them some sentence stems. This is a person. This is a thing. This is a place. This is a time. And get them to work together in pairs or small groups in breakout rooms if you're online with someone who has the same list. And get them to write on a piece of paper or a particular screen the definitions of these things without using the word. So, this is the thing that you really want to sit in after you've been walking around all day, as an example. Tell them there are two rules. It should be possible to guess, but not too easy. And within the 10 definitions, they have to include a range of the different defining relative clauses. How many you ask for will depend on the level, obviously, but you could say that they have to include who, which, that, when, where, and an example where the relative pronoun is missed out. Let them work together, write 10 definitions. Remember, they mustn't include the name of the thing that they're describing. You monitor and help and correct, correct the errors, that sort of thing. Now, the two groups swap the definitions that they've written. If they've just had list A, then they get the definitions that the other group have written for list B and vice versa. Then in pairs again, give them some time to try to guess what the nouns are from the definitions. To round off, you can give them the other list so they can check. And perhaps as a group, you can elicit the most interesting or imaginative definitions. Penier's example is, this is a triangle that swims, which I think is quite nice. It's a great activity and it gives a meaningful and creative reason to practice what can otherwise frankly be a fairly dull topic. I hope that your learners enjoy it and that you enjoyed this little video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.